the balance clustering it could be given by D. Okay, so that's for your introduction. Um, so I'm um, sorry, I'm just going to say university. So at the beginning, so let me first uh, briefly talk about the other universities and their problems. Although I believe most of the audience are pretty familiar with it. Suppose you are in a set of books in the space, and uh, also other uh, in your pay, we want to partition the different forms to take parts, and we want to cover each part uh, ball, and we want to minimize the maximum readers. So actually, this is a very fundamental problem in computer science with many applications in real world, and uh, data analysis, networking, machine learning, uh, many, and so on. Uh, but actually, in many real scenarios, we may consider some constraints to the clustering. So, for example, uh, we may consider adding some upper or lower bound on the cluster size. So, one typical uh, motivation comes from resource allocation and big data. You know, currently we are facing faster growing data size, and uh, uh, in some cases, it's uh, difficult to feed the whole data uh, into one single machine. So we have to do partition. Basically, we need to divide the given data size uh, into multiple machines and uh, process the data parallel. So for each single machine, we may have some capacity. And also, once you open a new machine, uh, you also need to consider some basic cost. So that means uh, after opening a new machine, uh, we don't want the, uh, this machine to be too accurate. So that means we have to consider both upper and lower bound for this uh, partition. So, um, so let me uh, briefly talk about the formal definition of balance and phase center clustering considered in this paper. So actually comparing with uh, uh, the other case, we only add two parameters, GL and PDU, to indicate the, upper, uh, the lower and upper bound for each cluster size. And uh, so you can look at this uh, tall example. We are given eight points in the 2D plan. I suppose A is equal to 2. So for ordinary, uh, ordinary clustering, we just cover those uh, eight points by two balls. But uh, if we consider the upper and lower bound, for example, if we let the both upper and lower bound to be equal to 4, so you can see uh, the result is significantly changed. So that means we have to consider some new idea to handle this problem. So here I list uh, several existing results for both ordinary and concurrent instant clustering. So for the ordinary case, uh, there are two famous results. One is by Gondolais, and the other one is by Hachbon and Schmois. They both have given this uh, two approximation algorithms for ordinary case center clustering, and they also both prove that uh, uh, unless P is equal to MP, uh, it's uh, impossible to get any um, approximation ratio lower than 2. And here are also several results uh, uh, for the case considering either upper or lower bound. And most recently, our another new paper to appear in class this year. Uh, in this paper, we have given a six approximation algorithm uh, with some, uh, uh, considering both upper and lower bound and uh, using some techniques like linear programming, relaxation, uh, and grounding. So what about the contribution in our this paper? So suppose we, uh, uh, first we assume the dimensionality B is high and the number of cluster K is constant. Then we have given a nearly linear time algorithm for this balanced K center passing and the resulting approximation ratio is full. So first uh, you may have the question why should we assume the number of clusters K is constant? Actually, we have two reasons. Because uh, all the previous uh, results I just mentioned, we never assume K is constant. We just assume K is a general input uh, number. So, but, but in this work, we have two reasons uh, to consider the case that K is a constant. So first, it's about theory. Because uh, we are just wondering that if we assume K is constant, if we just relax this requirement, can we get any increment in zero? So it's just a purely theoretical question. And uh, another reason is that in, in practice, for many practical problems, uh, the number of clusters K is not flat. So it, uh, it makes sense to assume that K is constant, at least for some cases. OK, so this is an uh, overview of our approach. Basically, suppose we have given such an instance uh, uh, for balance and k center clustering. 
uh, we have two steps. For step one, we determine the locations of the uh, k-cluster centers. Uh, so one thing I want to emphasize here is that uh, the cluster centers are not necessary from the input because we are in the continuous Euclidean space. So, so the cluster centers could uh, locate at any position in the space. And then based on the obtained cluster centers, we determine a balanced assignment to, uh, to, to minimize the object by the maximum radius. Okay, so next let me talk about these uh, two steps, separate degree. So for step one, how to find the k-cluster center? So first uh, let me briefly uh, introduce the well-known algorithm, normalized algorithm for ordinary k-center clustering. So the algorithm first uh, arbitrarily select one point, S1, uh, to serve as the first cluster center. And they have uh, constructed such a site because initially it only contains S1. And then in the following k minus one steps, the algorithm repeatedly selects the point, having the largest distance to uh, the big S, the set of already selected cluster centers. So you can see eventually the algorithm will select the key point. And um, um, so it's, a, it's just a very standard reading procedure. And uh, using triangle ecology is able to prove that uh, uh, the selected key point can generate two approximation, but it is only for ordinary clustering. Uh, the value is that if you directly apply this idea to balance the clustering, uh, the resulting approximation ratio could be arbitrarily large. Actually, we constructed an example to show this um, this claim, but due to the time limit, I just omit this uh, example in this uh, in this talk. So, um, how to solve this issue? Um, this is a lemma uh, we proved. Uh, we still use the uh, Gonzalez algorithm. We still uh, select this k point as one to s k. But the idea is that we don't directly uh, use this, uh, this k-point, we take the Cartesian product. So remember that we assume k is constant. So even we take the Cartesian product, the complexity is still polynomial. And then we prove that at least one k-tuple from this uh, Cartesian product can generate full approximation for balanced k-centered clusters. So let me briefly show you the, the basic idea for the proof. So um, initially, we just imagine there are k hidden optima clusters. So in reality, we don't know where are the optima clusters, but uh, it's just a full analysis. We just assume that uh, um, there are those uh, k uh, optima clusters. So in this figure, we assume k is equal to 4, and we just uh, simply denote the clusters by those balls. And then we still run Gonzalez algorithm to select the, the k points. So if we are lucky enough, the key point just uh, locate inside the uh, key balls separately. So you can see in this uh, in this lucky case, the four points locate inside four different balls. So in this case, we can use exactly the same idea from from the light algorithm uh, using this uh, triangle equality to prove the resulting approximation ratio is four. But if we are not that lucky, so that means there may be some point. Locate, locating inside the same box. So for example, this two points locate to both locate inside this box, and this box is empty, no one located inside it. So in this case, um, based on the nature of a quantized algorithm, we can prove that uh, there must exist uh, another point, S K, which is close enough to this uh, empty ball. And uh, how to measure this closeness? Um, we prove that this distance is no more than uh, the parallel distance of the points located inside the same ball. And because they locate inside the same ball, so their parallel distance is no more than the diameter of the ball. So based on this uh, observation, uh, because we take the Cartesian product, so we just uh, select the k tuple having uh, multiple points overlapping at this uh, position. And then this, um, actually this k tuple will generate the approximation for balanced and k-center classing. But actually, this lemma is not our final solution because uh, this lemma only tells us that uh, there exists a good uh, candidate from the Cartesian product. But the issue is that how to select the good candidate. And uh, even you get the candidate, how to determine the balanced uh, assignment. This is, uh, this is not a trivial question. So um, 
this is a sketch of our algorithm for answering that question. So first of all, as I just mentioned, we run compromise algorithm to get these pain points. And then we compute the NK distances from the input to this k point, and we order those distances to generate such a, such a set, big R. Then um, we need to select a good candidate from the Cartesian product. So that means we need to check each candidate. So for each candidate, as prime, we do better search on R. And uh, for each such a couple, as prime and R, we just check whether a balanced assignment exists. So after checking all the candidates from the Cartesian product, uh, finally we just output the candidate with the smallest uh, feasible, uh, feasible uh, uh, distance small. So actually a key point, a critical uh, step in this algorithm is that uh, once we fix this couple, how to determine a uh, balanced assignment exists. So a uh, straightforward idea is using Maxima's law. You know, we can, after we fixing this couple, we just uh, build such a bicolored graph. So the left color indicates the number of uh, input, the, the, the set of input points, and the right color uh, indicates the fixed uh, uh, tuple. Then we, uh, for any pair of vertices from different colors, if their distance is no more than R, we just uh, connect them by an edge. And for each vertex in the red column, uh, there is a demand and capacity equal to the given lower and upper bound. Then we just compute the maximum flow. If the maximum flow is equal to n, that means uh, this uh, couple is available. Otherwise, we just reject it. But the, the drawback of this approach is that the red line is at least a quadratic. So this is the issue. So in our paper, we replace this approach by a new idea to avoid this uh, progressive time. So our idea actually is inspired by a simple observation. So once we fix this couple, the candidate and the readers, basically we can go both pay balls in the space. So uh, like in this way, if the pay is equal to three, so in this picture we can directly draw three balls. So the given endpoint are divided into at most uh, two to the k minus one part um, because we assume there is no point located outside the union of the balls because otherwise we can directly reject this uh, this uh, this couple. So uh, so here uh, k is equal to three. So you can see we uh, generate uh, seven different uh, areas. So um, and then each part is covered by a unique subset of the balls. Okay. And uh, we, we use this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the k 2 selected from the input. 
but uh, but uh, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, uh, the classes are not necessarily not, not the classes, but our algorithm is right. the same kind of Right. Yeah. So you're saying the optimal one. The optimal could be some arbitrary. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, it's the same to case of that one. Um, I, I, I don't think so because we assume case constant. So this is, uh, yeah, but like all the previous coolers and the end is there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they only consider upper bound. They don't yeah, both. So for this part, the uh, 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 parameter T is covered. So, so following this observation, uh, we build uh, such a system of uh, linear equations and inequalities. Um, so it's a little bit messy, but uh, let me try to simplify the idea. So for each intersection either, as I mentioned, is covered by T balls. So we have this uh, this number. This is a fixed value uh, to indicate the number of points covered by those t balls from j1 to jt. And uh, also we have uh, t variables. Um, each variable indicates the number of points assigned to the corresponding cluster. So we have uh, uh, t variables for each intersection area. And uh, to ensure uh, the feasibility, we have the equations. We we like the summation of those uh, t. Uh, variables is equal to uh, this uh, fixed value. And also, uh, in order to guarantee the balance needs, uh, we have this uh, two uh, inequalities uh, for each cluster. So you can see, you can easily verify that the complexity of this system is only out of k times 2 to the k. If we have the same k is constant, so uh, it's still constant. And um, so we can easily solve this problem, this uh, system, by by the time out of log poly 2 to the t time. So if k is a constant, it's still acceptable. But uh, that's not enough, because uh, you know our event goal is to get a uh, assignment. So that means we need an uh, integer solution. But uh, so if we directly solve this uh, system, the solution could contain some fractional values. So this is uh, only remain easy. So for this purpose, uh, we build such a color graph so actually the construction is a little bit uh, complicated. So to simplify, I just uh, show you the same tall example. Suppose we only have three balls here. And then we build such a colored graph with uh, three vertices. Each vertex corresponds to one ball. And uh, for each intersection area, uh, if it's covered by t balls, then we build, uh, we generate t choose p, t choose two i days. So that means each i indicates uh, uh, corresponds to a type of variables in the area. So for example, you can see the intersection of these two balls, excluding the central part, um, because uh, t is equal to two, so we just uh, generate one edge with uh, a unique color. And similarly, for the other uh, two areas, we have the other two edges with the different colors. And for the central part, because it's uh, covered by three balls, so t choose, uh, three choose Two is equal to three, so we have three edges with the same colors. And then, uh, after constructing such a color graph, um, we consider three different uh, cases for rounding. For case one, uh, we assume that there is a circle in the graph with uh, at least uh, two different colors. So you can see uh, this is circle with three different colors, um, and then each edge corresponds to a couple of uh, variables. And we select around this circle, we select the, 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 the fractional value who is uh, closest to the by integer. So for example, we select 1.1 1 .1 here. Then we reduce this value by 0.1 and we transpose this 0.1 1 .1 to this value. But in order to guarantee the, the feasibility of the global system, we have to do a sequence of uh, modifications around this circle. So eventually, you can see we will add the one more integer number just here. And then we, um, you can imagine if we repeat this ready finite, finite steps, uh, we will either modify all the numbers to integer power and to the other two cases. For the case two, there is no circle, that, so it's uh, just a tree. For case three, there is circle, but each circle has only one color, so we can build such a pseudo tree. 
uh, that means each node is either a single vertex or a clique with a single color. So eventually, we can modify uh, any solution to an integer with uh, only poly to the k time. So this is our final result. Uh, we get full approximation and uh, only need uh, nearly linear time. And also, we have an uh, example to show that the approximation ratio of four is tight enough. And our algorithm can be actually extended to any metric space. Uh, the only difference is that we replace Moldy by Moldy, which is uh, running time for parallel parallel distance. Okay, that's all. Well, thank you. Very much. Let's go to the next one, and if you have any questions, you can ask what is going to